So um, this question, it says, find the potential at point, uh, at this point here, P1, P2, P3, and P4. I want you to highlight that because this is a, such a busy drawing. Uh, and um, I think I am going to make use of the apparent symmetry in the question to reduce the number of symbols I'm going to use in my analytical answer. So I see distance, this distance here, I'm going to just label that x naught. And it'll be same distance here, so that this is at the x equals minus x naught. And I'm going to use this as my y naught, so that this is at the y position of minus y naught. <laughs> Let me just use that symmetry. And it says find the potential at these four points. And what I'm going to say is that you can save yourself a lot of work if you take a little bit of time to work out a general expression. And here, the general expression would be basically voltage as a function of x and y. And you know, there's potentially g, but I'm just gonna assume that g is equal to zero here. I'm on an x, y plane. So once you work this out generally, then all you have to do to get the numbers for a, b, c, d, all four parts, is plug in the coordinates. That, oh, I need the two more letters. Um, did I? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this is what happens when you label your quantities before you fully understand what the question is asking. Let me label this D um, because I'm using Y naught um, in a sense to locate the coordinate of the point and I want to use the X naught in the exact same sense. So, <laughs> so, that, um, you know, so that I can say P1 is at the coordinate minus x not zero. And uh, P2 is at the coordinate x not zero. And P3 and four are at the coordinates zero minus y not, zero y not. And so once you have a general expression for voltage for all space, then these questions kind of become almost uh, trivial. So that's why I want to work this out generally because once I have that algebraic expression, then the rest of job is pretty easy. I'm just plugging in the numbers. And so let me finish labeling this. I am going to label this Q1. And I just want to highlight this, that as I'm labeling these charges, I'm going to do, uh, start doing something that I'm going to do more of, which is I'm going to try to write down a general expression. And one of the things you do when you try to do that is you include the signs into the symbol itself so that it doesn't matter if a Q2 is a negative charge or a positive charge, it's just a charge. And if it happens to be negative, I'll just include that into the number Q2 that I might be plugging in later. So that's the kind of new-ish convention that I'm gonna follow so that the expression I'm writing down here is much more general. So this is the setup here. I have two charges separated by, um, well, from uh, at a distance d from the origin h. So they are separated by 2d. And they are both on the x-axis. And I just want to write down the, what is the electric potential due to these two charges at any point in space. Now, I don't have a general formula for electric potential for any two charges. What I do have is electric potential due to a single point charge that if I look up my review or <laughs> formula card, it says it's a Coulomb constant times the amount of charge divided by R. And this R is the distance from charge. By the way, in case you are comparing this to textbook or whatever, I just want you to highlight that your many textbooks will, at this, by this point, convert to the uh, convention where instead of writing down Coulomb constant, they will write down one over four pi epsilon naught, where this is permittivity of free space, which, you know, is fine. Um, the, 
keeping to this convention of writing down Coulomb constant, it's more useful when you are work, potentially working with multiple unit systems. In any case, um, you can always substitute the same for Coulomb constant. So, so that's the formula I have uh, for a point charge. And um, so this is where I have to acknowledge that my charges are not at the origin. And if I'm uh, defining my coordinates so that they are referenced to the from origin, I need to write down an expression that applies to this situation. And uh, this is the kind of the general formula I'm going to suggest that um, if you have a formula for some function, <laughs> then um, this is a transformation you can apply. Um, <laughs> so you can look at this part. So I'm just gonna be focusing on Q1 right now. You can look at the situation as a result that you obtain if uh, you had a coordinate system defined this way and you apply the uh, translation to the axis to the right by distance d. If you did that, what you would end up with is the pic very picture you see. So for a situation like that, this is what I would uh, propose as the rule for applying your formulas. And I'll, I'll double check this proposal. So if you have uh, some formula for the function um, originally, then what that transformation would do is change this function to function of this form. Let me try to get this right. Um, so if I'm translating the axis to the right by distance uh, delta x, then I think it should be r. I want this to be plus or minus. <laughs> That's really the question. Um, I think I want this to be minus. No, I want this to be plus. R plus delta x. This is how I'm kind of doing this testing in my head. I'm trying to, uh, to uh, compare two points. Um, the two easy points to compare are the, the origin origin here and the place where the charge is here. Now, in the original setup, the place where charge is, R is equal to zero. That's where potential goes to infinity. Um, and the origin is where um, it's at a distance D in the positive direction. So um, here, as I imagine plugging in these things, you know, so delta X is gonna be a plus D because I'm moving the axis to the right by delta X, then, um, so if I plug in R equals zero, uh, that should give me, you know, plus D to the right. That's what that point is now. If I plug in R equals minus D, uh, then I should get the, where things go to infinity. So this is the rule that I would suggest. And applying that rule, this is what I would say is the potential due to this point charge here. Um, over all space. So V of, um, so original, uh, do I want, yeah, let me write down the original V of R. Original V of R is equal to Ke times Q1 divided by, and I have to write this out in terms of X and Y. And in terms of X and Y, that's the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And applying this transformation rule, what you would get is the new V of R, let me label that V1 of R, or, or you know, by, what I mean by R is really the vector R. So it's really the coordinates X and Y that I have in my head. That's gonna be equal to KEQ1 divided by, um, Uh, let me finish putting this in. Um, so X is gonna uh, change the, so my my uh, delta X as a vector here is uh, plus D X hat plus zero Y hat. So adding this is going to change the X component of that vector by plus D. 
So wherever I see x, I should replace the with x plus d. And uh, after I finish writing it down, I'll check it for any sign errors. So x plus d squared plus, and y would oh uh, y wouldn't be y would be unchanged. Yeah, it would be unchanged. So y would be just y squared. Okay, let me just do a spot check. If I plug in x equals minus d and y equals zero, it should be blowing up, and it does. Um, minus d plus d, zero, zero, this thing is blowing up. So I think I'm good there. So this is the electric potential due to the charge Q1. <laughs> I need to finish doing that for charge Q2. Now, for charge Q2, you have to imagine this as there having been access here, and that axis was moved to the left to by distance d. So there the delta x is um, uh, minus d. So let me write down v2 and I'll test it again after I've written it down. v2 of x and y is gonna be Coulomb constant times charge q2 divided by square root of um, x minus d squared plus y squared. Let me just spot check. If I plug in um, this coordinate here, uh, d0, then it blows up as I was expecting it to. Good. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, those are my two contributions to the electric potential at all space. And I taken care to write both of these expressions so that they are in this particular coordinate system. So I can just add them directly. That's the superposition principle that gives me the combined potential at all spaces. So when I do that, this is the, exp uh, this is the algebraic expression you get. Uh, V1 plus V2, which is going to give me potential at all points X and Y is equal to, uh, let me factor out, you know, there aren't really that many things that factor out, so let me just write it all out. Uh, Keq1 divided by square root of x plus d squared plus y squared um, plus Keq2 divided by square root of x minus d squared plus y squared. So once you have that, then the only remaining thing to do is the tedious task <laughs> of plugging in each of these coordinates for the points one, two, three, and four. <laughs> you plug in the x and y values here, all the others are given constants, and um, you'll be done. Now, um, I didn't bother trying to simplify here because it doesn't, uh, frankly, simplify. Um, there, there, there are times when things do simplify, um, like if uh, there was some relationship between Q1 and Q2, it might have simplified. That's the dipole setup. <laughs> if uh, magnitude of Q1 and Q2 are the same. Here, you, we don't have that, so it just doesn't simplify. So I didn't bother simplifying, just had to plug in the numbers. Um, yeah, so this is the um, application of superposition principle it, um, it, and uh, mathematical transformations, I guess. <laughs> um, so both of those things uh, give you the, this formula rather simply. Um,